Five tips for getting into cybersecurity in 2025. I'm Cyber Sali, and on this channel, we talk about cybersecurity. I'm currently an information security manager, but I've worked in consulting, audit, and other areas of cybersecurity. I got into cybersecurity with no experience, no degree, no certifications, and I'm going to be talking about what worked for me, what helped me get my foot in the door, and hopefully that can help you too in 2025. So, tip number one master the skill of learning quickly so essentially this is about learning how to learn and learning how you best learn so everyone has different learning techniques and for me because i didn't go to university i barely finished college I had a huge gap in my education you know I went straight into work I didn't really read any books I didn't really expand my mind or do any kind of complex thinking at the level you need to do to kind of learn cybersecurity concepts so I spent quite a lot of time on productivity learning how to learn understanding how to take notes better how you know your brain works and active recall and spaced repetition and how to get better at memorization and so many other things but this step really needs to be tailored for you me I'm quite visual and I like hard copy books to read that works better for me than videos but I'd be lying if I say I didn't owe my career to a lot of YouTube videos and stuff I've watched online so make sure you get ready for a period of learning it's like that saying of if you had six hours to cut a tree with an axe you should spend four hours sharpening the axe and two hours cutting the tree and that's kind of what I'm advocating for here is spend time researching productivity efficient note taking how to memorize and read and retain information and two books I would highly recommend would be how to take smart notes and Jim Quick Limitless these books were pivotal in my learning journey especially how to take smart notes once I'd kind of built up my cybersecurity brain which is kind of like my private resource collection of things i've come across things i'm interested in notes i used for exams resources and templates and things that i've kind of developed over my career essentially it's my second brain for cybersecurity and for a lot of other things but we're focusing on cyber my success in cybersecurity and me taking my career to the next level can literally be tied to just after i read that book because everything changed. I became so much more efficient, so much more organized with my information and had so many buckets of rich cybersecurity resources. I could constantly go back and reference all in one place. And because I built it, it was easy for me to navigate. Now I have got part of my second brain that I've chosen to share publicly linked in the description but i really do advise you build your own maybe look at mine for some inspiration it's completely free but i would say really focus on building your own in a way that works for you so that's tip number one tip number two stay updated with emerging threats trends and technology you need to have cybersecurity news sources you need to be able to follow key technologies and what's going on in the industry you need things that integrate with your kind of cybersecurity second brain and become like practical thinking tools rss feeds tracking blogs and information and changes personally how i did this when i first started was i literally deleted all my social media created a brand new google account for youtube and literally just followed cybersecurity resources and over time i've tuned some out added some more in and that's how i've built feeds that are tailored for cybersecurity news and resources and i kind of lived in that world and it was just like a period of total immersion where every time I pull out my phone to check YouTube or look at Twitter or Reddit or Discord or whatever I had, it was all cybersecurity. So I was kind of living in a world where all I seen was cybersecurity. All I listened to, all I watched, you know, you lived, breathed and ate it essentially and you know you don't have to do this forever you can go back to your normal netflix and other stuff you might be interested in reading or watching but i definitely think to really give you the best chances it's kind of that level of focus you need to put yourself into where you're just totally immersed in what you're trying to study and learn and nothing else matters in terms of social media and shows and books and stuff not looking after your family and eating and you know normal human stuff 
Anyway, tip number three, build hands-on projects. And this is something you'll see a lot of people pushing for. Cybersecurity is one of those industries where you don't need to have experience to actually have experience. And it's become so much easier now. The internet is full of so many different technology and cybersecurity projects that you can do. You've got so many great platforms like Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, TCM Security, and so many more. You've also got easily available technology like VirtualBox, VMware, Docker, Metasploit, etc etc where you can really build like a home lab a virtual lab document what you do there's even grc projects now i'm actually creating one right now always be plugging but my risk management project is still nearly done probably two videos left but yeah there's just so much you can do like literally you can learn everything you need to know and document it in a way that you can share with your employer so you have like a project-based cv it sets you apart it shows you're interested it also shows how you work how you think the quality of your writing and your documentation and your skills on a practical level so yeah definitely a very important step and tip to get into cyber security in 2025 tip number four invest in relevant certifications now there's so many different certifications out there in the cybersecurity industry and you'll hear a lot of people telling you about which ones to take in which particular order to have the most success in the industry and a lot of it's good advice but just remember there's a lot more cost effective options with projects and try hack me and other platforms like that and you also really need to consider where you live what country you're in your area and the demand in that area your country might be short of a particular skill set and this results in demand for a specific type of skill or technology knowledge and if you're not careful you can follow a roadmap or a certification path that isn't really in demand in your area and can make it quite difficult i'll give you an example if you are in the uk right now microsoft azure cloud computing cloud security is a really in demand skill just like it is almost everywhere in the world but more specifically if you were to invest a lot of time in google certifications and when i say google certifications i don't mean the cyber security generalist sir which is great i mean google cloud not a lot of countries and cities have a requirement for google cloud computing specialists obviously some do but the market cap is pretty much owned by aws second you'll have microsoft azure and coming in third you'll have google so realistically you want to invest in the certifications that give you the highest probability of getting your foot in the door so be very careful when you are looking for certifications and really research your area and your job boards just to find out what are the best things to learn and invest in and i would say to begin with start off quite generalist and then specialize later on and tip number five and this is a most important tip is networking joining communities and putting yourself out there there are so many groups on reddit on discord on slack and whatsapp telegram linkedin etc etc there's just so many groups you can be part of where you can find mentors people to help you people to guide you there's loads of events you can attend all over the world in almost every single country where you can physically network and meet people and you never know probably meet the person that gives you the opportunity but fundamentally I think above all of that is you need to think about your LinkedIn as a professional profile, a public CV, at least temporarily. It doesn't have to be forever. Even if you don't like social media, even if you don't like putting yourself out there, you really need to set yourself apart from everybody else. And in my experience and what worked for me and loads of others around me is when you're writing blogs, maybe making videos if YouTube is your thing, but you really don't have to. But at the very least, you should be documenting and writing about what you're doing and putting it out there. And then when you're applying, you should be sharing that with your employer alongside your CV. You know, here's a link to my GitHub. Here's a link to my blogger articles or write-ups for these boxes that I've hacked or whatever it may be, it shows you're passionate, it shows you're interested, they get to see how you think, how you write, how you problem solve, 
and how you can ultimately add value to their organization. So yeah, get good at marketing, reaching out to people, focus on like how to optimize your LinkedIn, connect with as many people as you can. You should have over a thousand LinkedIn connections in your first month or two, and you should be reaching out to quite a few of them. This is what I did. This is what a lot of people have done to get in. And yeah, people will ignore your connections or blank your messages, but that's just the nature of social media and especially LinkedIn you know you need to get started in doing that and then eventually you build the network and what I would say about this more than anything is I don't want people to misunderstand when I say you should have a thousand because that's just a number and it's more about the quality of your connections and the people you've spoke to and the relationships you've built as opposed to just having as many connections as possible. You could have 20,000 people that you've never spoke to. I would argue five strong relationships are way more valuable than that. Even one relationship. If you've offered value, offered to volunteer, help someone out, spoke to them, asked some questions, shown some interest, supported and pushed what they're doing. All of these things is what's gonna make people think about you when that role comes up. Those are my five top tips. I'll give you a couple bonus ones. Be comfortable with failure. Things are gonna go wrong. You're gonna get rejected. It's gonna take you a long time to figure stuff out. Keep your head up and keep going and not give up. Another bonus tip is critical thinking and curiosity. Dig deeper into problems and never settle for certain surface level solutions. Really try and understand what is going on under the hood. And I'll say it again as another bonus tip. Document your journey. Start a blog. Create a GitHub. Use LinkedIn and talk about your growth and what you're learning and what you're up to. So yeah, that's my five top tips for 2025. I hope you get the job of your dreams. You can check out my videos and resources in the description. I'm sure that'll help you out and save you some time along your journey. And yeah, if you've liked the video, you know, please consider sharing it. Like the video, it really supports me. And comment and share your thoughts. Let me know what job you're after in cybersecurity and how you're planning to get there. I can reply to the comments and help you out and give you a little advice or maybe even make a video on it so yeah any questions drop them in the comments and i will see you in the next one